Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy and Chris with me. Hey y'all. Shalom. And in today's video, we're going to be doing our new moon report for September of the year 2023. Mm -hmm. Now, we're over here looking at the uh, report from truthofyahweh.org. And what we see is that several people reported seeing the new moon on September the 16th. Right. So in this video, we're going to be updating the sacred calendar. Um, there will be a little bit of uh, uh, change to it. You'll notice in this video. We'll also be talking about the Sabbath day and when it is. We'll be talking about the upcoming feast days and when they are. Right. All right. The first thing we're going to glance at is our celestial calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the latest revision. Right. But I think this one is actually going to be too good for this demonstration. So we're not going to use this. this no, if we're talking about the six month in the year 2023. And by now, people should know that there is some issue with the Jewish calendar versus the sacred calendar. Right. But what I'm trying to say is if anybody had this particular revision of the calendar, they, they wouldn't have noticed this bump in the road at all. Right. It would have been too easy. For yeah. Them. They, it wouldn't have, they, they're actually watching going, why is everybody confused now? This is Rev 12, the latest revision. But let's go back to Rev, what is this, Chris? Four. Rev 4, this is the latest Rev, praise our Father in Heaven, where we actually included all of the Gregorian dates throughout the year. Right. Now, of course, that presents its own issues when you're overlapping two calendars upon each other. Mm -hmm. But we can use this in order to understand how we're actually in the sixth month instead of the seventh month in the year 2023. Yeah, so if I'm understanding this right, there are seven months there. Because you see seven moons. But that's going to be one of the main points of this video is we cannot count moons. Right. That's an error. That's what's wrong with the Jewish calendar today. And that's what we're going to show in this video. So we'll come back to this. Let's jump over and let's learn about Hillel 2. This guy is responsible for fixing the calendar and creating what we know as the Jewish calendar. Right. This Hillel too was the head of the Sanhedrin at the time. The head Jewish person or the head Jew. Mm -hmm. he, he was actually the head priest. I guess we they didn't have high priests at the time, but he would have been recognized as the high priest. Like equivalent to a pope? Not exactly, because this was during the time of the first pope. Oh, okay. Constantine. Mm -hmm. The thing about it, you remember Constantine was persecuting the church. Right. And one of the reasons why he was persecuting the church was for their obedience to the sacred calendar. Right. In other words, he didn't want them to keep the sacred calendar. And as a result of his persecution, this guy Hillel II actually modified the calendar. Basically to appease Constantine. Absolutely. And so that's a good point is that this calendar that he created now was actually approved by Constantine right. and the Catholic Church. So in his efforts to actually help the people because at the time they were getting killed, he actually did more harm to not just them but the following generations. This is world's last chance. Um, but if we go back to Wikipedia, we see the last sentence of this paragraph says that he severed the ties which united the Jews of the diaspora to their mother country and to the patriarchate. Right. In other words, he cut them off. You know, right. He cut us off right. by creating this new calendar he created the Jewish world. The Jewish world was created based on this because no longer do we have ties to our patriots, our forefathers, in other words. Right. They're disconnected. Mm. And so now we're only acting like the Jews. We're Jewish now. Right. So with him severing the ties, that means 
that the sacred calendar was somewhat lost, no longer being used correctly. Absolutely. And that, that takes us to our next point. That's over here in the book called the Book of Jubilees mm -hmm. in chapter six, where we learn really quickly how our sacred calendar works. Right. I mean, it's there in a nutshell in verse 23 that our seasons start with the new moon of the first month, the fourth month, the seventh month, and the tenth month. Right. What he's talking about is the Enoch calendar, which we can do any search for on Google and find several different representations of this Enoch calendar. I mean, many people reading the book of Enoch have come up with how this sacred calendar work and we can just about click on any one of them. And what it shows us is that these periods, these gates or these windows are broken down into 30, 30 and 31 day windows or 91 day seasons. Right. Making 364 for the whole year. Absolutely. And so when we come back over to this celestial clock calendar rail four and plot the moons for 2023 we see the stark difference between the jewish calendar and the enoch calendar the right. celestial calendar the, the calendar in which the celestial clock is based on so christian you want to briefly tell them what you did here so i went to moonsighting.com and got the dates for the sightings of the moon and plotted them on this graph so that we could see how they went for the whole year starting for the new moon after the spring equinox. Okay, so what we're looking at then are seven moons plotted onto six gates. Right. And this is why there are several people who are celebrating the fall festivals here in the summertime. Mm-hmm. So is this re the reason, uh, because we have the seven moon on the six gates, that you say that you cannot count the moons? Absolutely. And we'll let that lead us into our next point. And that's what Moses warned us about. And that's counting these moons. That's back in Jubilees, isn't it? Chapter 6 and verse 36. Matter of fact, we'll let you go ahead and read it. For there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons, and comes in from year to year, ten days too soon. So in other words, there's somebody out there that's counting these moons, and they're going to keep counting them all the way around. And what they're going to notice is that their year is going to be ten days too short. Right. So he's saying that we're not supposed to be counting moons. That That's why... We are now faced with the argument on whether we're supposed to be celebrating the fall festival in late summer or are we supposed to be celebrating it in early autumn? Mm -hmm. And so the Jewish Gregorian calendar counts the moons. Is that right? I like the way you said that, but absolutely. And it's counting these moons and it's putting us in the wrong month. And let's go back and see what else Moses said about this. In verse 37. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony, and an unclean day, a feast day. And they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. Yeah, so the jubilee year is talking about there. You know, he's saying that if they do this, if they count these moons, they're going to lose track of the Jubilee years. Right. It says they're going to lose track of the feast days, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, here's obvious. Here's a prime example here in the year 2023 when we're doing the fall feast days wrong. Some of us are. And the Sabbath days. Right. This fixing of the Jewish calendar actually fixed the Sabbath days. It was this particular calendar, this, like Stacy called it, the, the Jewish Gregorian calendar, placed their Jewish Sabbath day on the Gregorian Saturday. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You got to understand, Saturday didn't appear on any other calendar before the Gregorian calendar. It wasn't on the Julian calendar. It was just like days one and days two or days A and days B. It was only on our uh, 1582 Gregorian calendar do we see days like Monday and Tuesday on them. When they actually got names. Yeah, but it, and so now we see the Jewish Sabbath day to fall on every Saturday. That's because it is a fixed calendar. And at first when I heard the word fixed, I thought fixed as in made better. But in reality, it was fixed as in made solid. Or a better word might be made stationary. So each year, it comes around at the same time. And I would say that this is very convenient for a lot of people, but it's wrong. Yeah, absolutely. You see here in this article on Wikipedia, it says the fixed calendar was of a great benefit to the Jews of his and his subsequent generations. For one reason, they stopped killing them. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. once they got on this Jewish calendar, this ish calendar, um, the the persecutions stopped. But then they were no longer dependent on the mother country mm-hmm. for to know what day or what season they're on. They, you see here. It says when you are convinced that the winter quarter will extend beyond the 16th day of Nisan. Declare the year a leap year and do not hesitate. In other words, this gives everybody the right to declare when the leap years are. When the Yeah, because when you are convinced, that doesn't give any solid proof or anything. Yeah, you just believe it. Right. And so not only will you have people celebrating on the wrong day, but they'll be celebrating on different days as well. Absolutely. It falls before the autumn equinox. We're still in summer time in that year. Right. And that wasn't the only year. You see the same thing in the year 2021. Right. Which would have been a year that the majority of people would have missed the Feast of Tabernacles because they would have done it too early in the wrong season. Right. They're celebrating Tabernacles in the summertime when it's a fall festival. And then you see the same thing will happen again in the year 2023. With the Rosh Hashanah falling before the equinox. They are declaring their fall festivals again too early. And this is what's wrong with the Jewish calendar. is because we're expected to keep these feast days every year. Right. They wouldn't be called an appointed time if, you know, even if you have an appointment, you just don't show up anytime you want to. It's a specific time that you have to show up or else you miss your appointment. That's what any um, secular thing that we're going to, whether it's doctor, dentist, or whatever, a job. Um, so we are given an appointed date, according to scripture, the day that we're supposed to show up. You just can't show up any time. One starts to ask the questions, okay, what happens if we don't break these cycles? If, for instance, when we started keeping the feast days right in 2019, continuing on through 2020, there was no misunderstanding in 2021. And instead of the majority of the world becoming heathen again because they missed the Feast of Tabernacles, they would have continued with their seal on through to now. Where would these people be as a nation? They would have grown a lot spiritually. I believe we have to start over once we get cut off. Once we miss these feast days and get cut off, we have to be rebaptized in everything. Right. So, in other words, this Hillel 2 calendar is basically keeping this nation of Israel in reset mode. Keeping us from getting even three years right in a row. And then that makes you think about how when the Messiah came, he spent three years with his disciples, three and a half years with his disciples. So, it probably takes at least that long even based on our own testimony it takes that long and the testimony of others i can think of other people who have been dealing with this angel of punishment for three and a half years but yet before we reach the three and a half year mark we're basically tripped up because our calendar is off our jewish calendar is off and then we end up having to start over again so we're in a perpetual cycle of reset Every so many years. And that's you can't what, get out of uh, starting all over again 
um, in order to make improvements uh, and to see the prize, we're constantly resetting ourselves. Absolutely. And so we're going to have to pick up the books of Enoch and the books of Jubilees and even the book of Jasher. Right. And gain that information that they're trying to hide from us because this information is absolutely necessary. Right. But let's go back over because we didn't actually finish reading Jubilees to see what happens if, if we don't hearken unto this message. Let's, let's see what else it says here. But before we go on, it also says that an unclean day, a feast day, and they will confound all the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean with the holy. Well, that's what's going on now. You right. have people who are blowing the trumpets, which is a big deal. That mm -hmm. changes their Sabbath day and everything changes. You know, they will be celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles and Atonement on the wrong day. So you think about Atonement Day where Leviticus 23 tells us of our requirements on this day. Mm -hmm. It tells us that we have to afflict our souls. That's, what, that's a do-do. Right. And then it says that we can't go to work. Mm -hmm. That's a don't-do. Right. Both of these have severe consequences. Right. One of them is if we go to work, it says we'll die. We'll, we'll be killed. Mm -hmm. This other one says that if we don't afflict our souls, or we don't do charitable deeds, pray for each other, whatever we, we do to afflict our souls, if we don't do that that day, we'll be cut off. Right. We'll, be, be, we'll basically be turned into heathen. Right. Well, here in this sabbatical year, 2023, with the feast days off the way they are, people will be taken off on the wrong day. Right. And afflicting their souls on the wrong day. Mm -hmm. on an unclean day mm -hmm. and then when the real day of atonement comes around of course based on the verification of the new moon on or about October the 25th which is the right day of the day of atonement they will be at work right, right. so they will be um, working on the clean days and on the unclean days they will be um, doing the things that we were told is necessary to be done all right, we see here that it's recognized as National Greasy Foods Day. Yeah, that might include pork chops and ham hocks. Which is a typical Wednesday meal. Mm. So my point is, is that these people, this, they're going to be going to work. Right, and this right. is just a regular day of the week to them. Mm -hmm. But this is the day that if they don't get these particular actions right. They will die spiritually and be cut off from their people. Okay, well... That's what's happened in the past, and we hope that's what happens in the year 2023. But you got to understand the prophetic fulfillment of Atonement Day. That's when the Great Holocaust is supposed to happen, when we're supposed to lose about 75% of all life on the planet. Right. Now, would that be the year 2023? Of course, there's no way for us to know. But the thing about it, of course, we want to be doing the right thing. Right. Just in case. Right. Don't want to be caught lacking. So that brings the question then. Did they know that this was going to be the sabbatical year and understanding this miscalculation in the Jewish calendar approved it? Knowing that in the most important time of human history, the people will celebrate their feast days a month too early. And they will miss the requirements of Atonement Day. Mm -hmm. And maybe even more importantly, they won't be doing this reading on the Feast of Tabernacles during the sabbatical year like Moses told us about in Deuteronomy 31. Right. So Moses told us this particular day was coming and he told us exactly what to do on this day. And then he gave us another book called Jubilees to tell us how to understand that day. Mm -hmm. He probably was responsible for preserving the books of Enoch through all of that time, making sure we had the information we needed mm -hmm. so that here in this year, and we're getting ready for this sabbatical year and these Jubilee years, we would actually be doing what we are supposed to be doing in the right season. Right. 